and welcome to Local Doctors on Call. I'm Suzanne Lee. I'm joined tonight by Dr. Misha Payant, President of East West College of Natural Medicine on Tamiami Trail in Sarasota. Dr. Payant, welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself. We, we've had you here before, but let's hear a little bit about you from you. Well, thank you for having me again. I am the President of East West College of Natural Medicine. I got my doctorate degree in Portland, Oregon, and I specialize in gynecology and geriatrics. I've published uh, papers on migraines and, and uh, pain conditions. I've published a couple textbooks. And at the college, I, I manage the college and also uh, teach a few classes and see patients. Well, this is a live call-in show, and many people may not be aware of that, so I want to really encourage our viewers to call us. 361-4675, that number, 361-4675. And Dr. Payan, tonight we're focusing on digestive health, mood, and anti-aging. These are three very powerful, what would you call that, issues? Issues, that's yeah. good. Yeah. They're very powerful issues. So what can you tell us about some of the root causes of some of the issues that we might face out of those three? Sure. Typically what I find clinically the root cause of a lot of patients' conditions is twofold. One, inflammation, and that usually originates in the gut, and the damaging effects of free radicals called uh, oxidative stress. Those are basically the two conditions that I find. So what is oxidative stress? What is that? Oxidative stress is caused by, a, by free radical damage. Um, without trying to bore you too much, a free radical is, um, is a molecule. Well, a healthy molecule has two electrons or, a, or paired electrons. Now, a free radical is a molecule with only one electron. And what that free radical wants to do is find another electron. So it's going to take, take it from a healthy molecule and then that healthy molecule then becomes a free radical because it's going to want to find another electron from another healthy molecule. So this creates a really um, chain reaction of damaging effects on the body. So is that what inflammation is? I mean, is with inflammation, is that what causes chronic disease? And what, if so, what is inflammation? <clears throat> well, inflammation, again, uh, what I find typically comes from the gut. Now, when I say gut, I'm really talking about the large intestine, to some extent the small intestine and stomach. But the inflammation from the gut is typically caused by um, a poor diet, uh, carbohydrates, um, sugars, um, basically the standard American diet. And that causes the, uh, the gut to inflame. There's a protective lining within the gut, within the, the large intestine. And that protective lining keeps uh, particles and molecules within the tube if, um, itself. Now, when with the diet of sugars, carbohydrates, wheat, grain, things like this, it damages that protective lining and particles or molecules can leave the gut and enter the bloodstream. Now the blood, the body won't recognize those particular particles as, um, as self. It, re it, it recognizes it as non-self, so it attacks it. The attack is actually inflammation. So that is what that is. When, that is, when what bacteria escaping from the gut, is that it could, what you're trying to say? It could be um, uh, even a molecule leaving the gut into the bloodstream. It doesn't necessarily have to be bacteria. Okay, so some of the effects of that inflammation might be what? I mean, we talked a little bit before the show and I'll explain my own right. situation, but what do you determine some of the symptoms of inflammation? Um, that could be digestive issues, constipation, diarrhea, foggy thinking, um, joint pain, malaise, stiffness, any of those could, be, uh, could originate from the gut. So we are talking with Dr. Misha Payan from East West College of Natural Medicine. I want to encourage our viewers to call if you have a question for the doctor, 361-4675. That's 361-4675. This is a live call-in show, and we do encourage your participation. So we talked a little bit before the show about some of the changes that I felt myself personally that I needed to make. I was noticing... Um, I was noticing my stamina was coming down a little bit, and I was also noticing some aches, a little bit right. of aches, and I was noticing a little bit of joint pain. And then I picked up the book uh, Wheat, Wheat Belly. Belly. The Wheat Belly. 
And I thought, well, I'm just going to see what this has to say. Maybe right. there's something in here that would pertain to me. Um, do you, are, they, are those symptoms that I just described related to inflammation and potentially the wheat that I was consuming? Absolutely. Um, there's been a lot of studies that wheat and grains cause inflammation. Um, Winston Price actually <clears throat> um, did a lot of studies uh, in... Um, in areas of the Amazon where they uh, weren't industrialized at all. They were very primitive. They didn't eat grain. He introduced grain into their diet and, they, and he witnessed and was able to photograph teeth changing from perfect teeth to decayed cavity uh, teeth. The teeth were falling out. And this was just due to the um, introduction of grains. When you talk to patients about their diet, do you find that when they eliminate some of these things from their diet that they show some signs of improvement? Absolutely. What I hear often with patients is that once, once we change their, their microbiome, once we change the bacteria in their gut to, to be very diverse and to eliminate harmful bacteria, one of the first things that they tell me is that they stop craving carbohydrates and they stop craving sugar and then ultimately they start losing weight without really changing much of their diet besides these cravings going away. What it is is the patient isn't, the person themselves isn't craving those sugars and carbohydrates, it's the bacteria. The bacteria that live off of sugar and carbohydrate. So once we eliminate that bacteria, those cravings go away. All right, 361-4675 is our telephone number. Just before break, I wanted to just ask you a little bit about, you, when you were here before, we talked about digestive health and how important that is. So before we go to break, tell us what we can hear more of after the break. Uh, we'll talk about um, particular foods that, that are, um, should be avoided that will cause inflammation. We'll talk about um, antioxidants and uh, some of the, the tests that we can run to improve someone's health. All right, that sounds great. Dr. Misha Payan is our guest tonight with East West College of Natural Medicine. 361-4675 is our telephone number. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Dr. Misha Payan, President of East West College of Natural Medicine. For over 20 years, we've been helping our patients improve their health, and more importantly, maintain their health by using Oriental and Western medicine. Many of our patients refer to us as the best kept secret in Sarasota. Call today to schedule your consultation or for more information regarding our program in Oriental medicine. East West College of Natural Medicine. It's not a secret anymore. Hi, I'm Dr. Steven Wrench, Dean of Clinical Sciences at East West College of Natural Medicine in Sarasota. Our approach to wellness using Oriental and Western medicine is often referred to as complementary, alternative, integrative, or even holistic medicine. We like to think of it as simply medicine. Call East West College of Natural Medicine today to schedule your consultation or to learn more about our program of Oriental medicine. Welcome back to Local Doctors on Call. I'm Suzanne Lee. Friends, we are live tonight. Local Doctors on Call would love to take your calls with Dr. Misha Payant, president of East West College of Natural Medicine. Our telephone number is 361-4675. We're taking your calls on digestive health, mood, and diet. That's also a very important part, but diet affects mood. I mean, let's be honest. I would think I was telling you when I started to give up some of the wheat that I noticed was making me feel not so great lately. Right. Um, I was pretty crabby. I mean, <laughs> you know, trying to find a substitute for this, what do you recommend? Well, that's an interesting point that you brought up. There are certain foods that we are absolutely addicted to, sugars, salts, and grains. So if you take yourself off of sugar, salt, and or grains completely, you're going to go through withdrawals. You're going to feel malaise, um, stomach would be upset, crabby, you're just going to feel very uncomfortable. You're going through withdrawals. Interestingly enough, if you stopped dairy, 
you won't go through those withdrawals. So that tells us how negative uh, of an impact these particular foods have on us. And we talked a little bit about because when we when we grew up, wheat was good for you. You everybody eats wheat. If you eat wheat bread, well, obviously you're one of those healthy nut people, right? But this is not your grandmother's wheat that Absolutely we're not. eating today. Absolutely not. Um, there's most of the foods are genetically modified. Grain or wheat hasn't been technically genetically modified, but it's been mutated so much that it is definitely not the same grain. The height's different. Um, there's more gluten, There's, uh, it's just not the same. And plus the pesticides, herbicides, fungicides that are in, in those products as well. Let's move our discussion into some mood disorders and some of the patients that come to you and experience different types of mood disorders. And then you were explaining to me before that, what, that antidepressants play a certain role in making us feel a certain way because it's not just our mind where this is having an effect, it's actually our mind and our gut. Explain that a little bit more. Sure. So the most common drugs um, that you can think of are SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. These are your Paxil, Prozac, things like that. Now, an interesting thing is it's only less than 5% of serotonin, the feel-good uh, neurotransmitter, is in our brain. 80% of serotonin is in our gut. So when we take these SSRIs, these uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, they do have an adverse effect on our GI tract, constipation, diarrhea, and a list of other components. That's probably because most of the serotonin is in our gut. So my next question was gonna be, why does treating the gut effectively help the brain, mood, and even anxiety? And you're saying this is a relationship. Absolutely, the bacteria in our, in our gut, and please keep in mind, 99% of our genetic material is not even our own. It's the, it belongs to the bacteria in our GI tract, in our gut, the bacteria that call our large intestine home. These bacteria modulate and create the neurotransmitters like serotonin, the feel-good hormone, um, melatonin that help us fall asleep. And serotonin in our gut plays a major role in gut motility. So when we take these antidepressants, we're basically affecting the, the gut motility because of the serotonin effect. So are people genetically predisposed to feeling a certain way with an antidepressant and our chemical makeup? Sure, there are, there are several um, genes that, that can definitely play a role in, in how we feel. And when we, when we run a genetic profile, uh, we, can, we can see these genes. Another thing about uh, these, these medications is there's particular genes when I run a genetic profile on a patient that I'll look for. Uh, for instance, the CYP2D6. This is a gene that tells me a patient is an ultra-fast metabolizer. What that means is they burn through medications quickly. So, for instance, if you take a 12-hour um, anti-allergy or antihistamine, you might only feel the effects for four to five hours because you're an ultra-fast metabolizer. But what that also means is that you can feel negative side effects that, that much quicker and even stronger. There's an, another gene that I'll look for. It's a CYP2C9. This gene tells me that a patient's not going to respond to an antidepressant very well at all. Um, and keep in mind only 30 to 40 percent of people will respond to an antidepressant to begin with, but the combination of these two genes will tell me that a patient is, could have extreme negative side effects to the medications and not get any positive benefits. Can you elaborate a little bit more on serotonin and is melatonin also in our stomach or is that just in our... It's in our, our large intestine. Melatonin is also? Also, correct. Okay, so what is, the, what is the best way to make sure that we are in balance? What are some of the things that we should be paying attention to regarding serotonin? Sure. Well, the best way to understand um, gut health would be to do um, a comprehensive stool analysis. This, and this is something that we offer at East West College of Natural Medicine. And basically, it's a stool test, but it's a very particular uh, test. We find out exactly what's in the gut as opposed to what should be in the gut. We find out if there's any parasites, 
and 40% of all American adults have a parasite that they don't know about. So we'll find out if there's any parasites, yeast, or fungus overgrowth, and then we'll look at the particular bacteria strands and see um, what should be in there. The gut should be very diverse with bacteria. The more diverse it is, the healthier it is, just like the rainforest. So when someone has a, um, a, a gut bacteria that, uh, that's not very diverse, that's when we're going to see chronic inflammation, chronic disease, degenerative diseases, things like that. I think most of our viewers may have worked through dinner tonight, so maybe we can elaborate a little bit more on the parasite. I think I'm a little stuck there. <laughs> so <laughs> tell me more about that. Um, you know, these parasites can, can come from basically anywhere. These, these could come from someone who's taken a trip out of the country and you don't even see the effects, the negative effects of that parasite for even 12 months after you, you contracted it. It can come from um, poorly processed foods, um, unsanitary foods. It, they can basically come from anywhere. And again, you won't be able, you might not be able to see the effects immediately it, it could take 12 months. Another thing about the parasites is when we, when we do the, uh, the stool analysis, when we do the collection, we collect three separate days because sometimes these parasites will be active um, one day and then they go dormant the next. So we collect for three days to get a good sampling. Could, where would we get these again? I mean, would they be in our food? Most, most of the time it's in the food, yes. Even if we wash our food? Well, yes, actually. <laughs> really? <laughs> wash it. Okay. All right. Any tips on symptoms that we might recognize? Uh, I, I guess I'm not familiar with this enough to know. Um, sure. So. Well, again, they could. It could happen over a long period of time. So, if you're feeling um, malaise or or stiff joint stiffness or foggy for a long period of time, like more than three months, this is something you might want to consider. Well, maybe I'll be in to see you. Okay. <laughs> Three six one four six seven five is our telephone number. Three six one four six seven five. Our guest is Dr. Misha Payan. We are talking about our digestive health tonight with East West College of Natural Medicine on Tamiami Trail. We'll take a break and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Stephen Wrench, Dean of Clinical Sciences at East West College of Natural Medicine in Sarasota. Our approach to wellness using Oriental and Western medicine is often referred to as complementary, alternative, integrative, or even holistic medicine. We like to think of it as simply medicine. Call East West College of Natural Medicine today to schedule your consultation or to learn more about our program of Oriental medicine. Hello, I'm Dr. Misha Payan, President of East West College of Natural Medicine. For over 20 years, we've been helping our patients improve their health, and more importantly, maintain their health by using Oriental and Western medicine. Many of our patients refer to us as the best kept secret in Sarasota. Call today to schedule your consultation or for more information regarding our program in Oriental medicine. East West College of Natural Medicine. It's not a secret anymore. Welcome back to Local Doctors on Call. We're talking about our digestive health and anti-aging as well as mood with Dr. Misha Payant, president of East West College of Natural Medicine on North Tamiami Trail in Sarasota. Your calls are welcome tonight, 361-4675, 361-4675. Dr. Payant, let's talk a little bit about aging. What happens to our skin when we age? Sure, the most visible sign of aging is of course wrinkles. And this is due to sun damage and um, pollutants, uh, uh, pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, and of course smoking, and oxidative stress caused by free radicals. What happens is this uh, oxidative stress uh, damages the collagen and elastin in our skin. Collagen and elastin are fibers that make your skin uh, bounce back. So when you pinch it, it bounces back. The older we get, the longer it takes for the skin to, to go back down. And that again is caused by 
oxidative stress damaging the collagen and elastin. So what is a free radical? Again, that free radical is uh, it's a, a, a molecule that has an unpaired electron that creates a damaging uh, chain reaction with other molecules. And it's only until we get an antioxidant that that free radical damage can, can be stopped. Now, an antioxidant is a larger molecule that's able to, to take that single electron from that free radical, and then that free radical becomes stable. And it also can donate an electron to a free radical, then making that molecule paired with electrons. And that stops that chain reaction of damage. So do our bodies create free radicals to fight bacteria and infections? Absolutely. Our body creates healthy free radicals to fight bacteria and viruses. It's the, the bad free radicals that are caused by um, the sun radiation, pollutants, and cigarette smoking. It's very damaging. Very damaging. So how does a free radical then turn into disease? And this might require a little more explanation. How does that happen? A free radical, again, it creates that chain reaction of damage between molecules, and that damages individual cells. That can lead to degenerative diseases, um, chronic inflammation, um, hyperpigmentation. That's where there's darker areas of your skin, um, skin cancer. So how then do you fight this destructive pattern? What, what must you do? Well, again, our body can make, make its own free radicals, or, or well, free radicals and antioxidants, but because of the amount of uh, sun radiation that we get due to decreased ozone, and living in Florida, we have a lot of sun, pollutants and, and a poor diet again, we need to actually supplement our body with antioxidants. There's, there's several uh, common antioxidants that you've probably heard of, vitamin C, vitamin E, alpha lipoic acid. Um, there's antioxidant foods, blueberries, green leafy vegetables, of course. But individually, they're not strong enough to fight this free radical, free radical damage and oxidative stress. So there are supplements and products out there that take some of the best antioxidants, they put them together, and these antioxidants work very strong as a whole, more so than they would individually. So tell us a little, a little bit more about the power of an antioxidant. Why is it so powerful? Um, well, powerful antioxidants will stop that uh, chain reaction of free radical damage, and it will also reverse the, it can actually reverse the aging process. Also, a strong antioxidant will activate what's called a NERF2 activator, an NRF2 activator. And in a cell, this is its own protective mechanism to protect itself from damage. As we get older, and more pollutants and more sun radiation, that NERF2 activator decreases. With a powerful antioxidant, it can stimulate this NERF2 NERF activator and protect cells. Let's take a call from Yvonne. 361-4675 is the number Yvonne dialed. Yvonne, you're on Local Doctors on Call with Dr. Misha Payon. Good evening. Good evening. You were talking about your skin and uh, healthy skin. I have vitiligo and I've had it for 10 plus years now. And I know that my body is attacking itself and it has done that in taking the pigment away. What can I do to help my body not attack itself? What can I do to make myself healthy? Sure, there's, there's a couple different approaches that I would take in a case like this. One is I would first recommend um, a good antioxidant uh, skincare product. Um, there's a few that I recommend. There's one actually, um, there's a few products that I recommend that are on my website, which is www.mylifevantage.com backslash Dr. Payant. Um, there, the, the products here have a strong antioxidant effect where it will, uh, it will be absorbed into the skin and 
protecting the skin from the outside in. And then uh, a powerful antioxidant that you, would in, that you would take in a pill form would help from the inside out. I would also do probably an organic acid test. This is a urine analysis, which will tell me exactly what nutrients a patient is de in deficient in. So it, this, is, this is a lot better approach than going to GNC and having someone just tell you, oh, this nutrient's good, this vitamin you probably need. By doing a test uh, like this organic acid test, I can tell exactly what an individual is deficient in nutritionally. Now, nutrients work as, as uh, like a, an, uh, an orchestra. They have to work together. Now, in an orchestra, I can't say flutes take the night off, trombones play extra hard. It just doesn't work that way. But once we know what the body needs exactly, these nutrients will work in harmony and create a symphony and allow your body to sing and work as a whole and heal itself. Yvonne, I hope we've answered your question. Thank you so much for calling Local Doctors on Call. You're watching Local Doctors on Call where we have about two minutes left and we were talking about digestive health. And I wanted to ask you, Dr. Uh, Payan, if you could elaborate a little bit on some foods, combining some foods that would work well together. Sure. Um, obviously, uh, having natural foods, organic foods, when you look at your plate, 51% of the plate should be raw. 49% of the plate should be cooked. Now that raw portion can be um, vegetables and fruit and the cooked portion can be a protein source or cooked vegetables. Uh, now having the plate designed in this fashion will prevent the body from um, attacking itself. We don't know why, but if you eat 100% cooked meal or 100% raw meal, the body will, will uh, start to attack itself because it doesn't understand that that food is is healthy. We don't understand why, but that combination of 49% cooked, 51% raw is the best approach. So I want to make sure 49% cooked, 50% right. raw, 51% raw, 51% raw, and that should be the look of our plate. That should be the look of is your plate. Is that every meal or is that just dinner? More, the more meals that you can have it look like that, the better. It prevents what's, what's called digestive leukocytosis, where the body creates an inflammatory response. So as we wrap up here, these are some of the things that patients will be learning about when they come to see you. Tell us Absolutely. what else we can learn in our last minute. Sure. Well, at East West College of Natural Medicine, we take a, a holistic approach to the, to the patient. So we will look at your diet, your lifestyle, and come up with a treatment protocol designed specifically for you as an individual. We, t we take the, the body as a whole and treat the root cause. We don't take the approach a pill for an ill. It's not a one size fits all medicine. So prepare to spend some time with you and exactly. they will give you some discussion, diet, uh, lifestyle, and this right. is all very much a holistic well-rounded approach to someone's health. Absolutely. Dr. Misha Payan, thank you so much. Thank you I, very I much. do appreciate your time. For Dr. Misha Payan with East West College of Natural Medicine, I'm Suzanne Lee. Thank you for watching Local Doctors on Call on SNN. Have a good night.